All right, my next guest is the director of teacher engagement at the Freedom Foundation, Eloise Smith. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me on today. Okay, so you're going to you're going to scare every parent watching and you're going to tell me that the teachers unions led by the NEA are telling their members to destroy any documents related to gender transition or conversations they're having with kids. They're not only keeping a secret, they're burning the evidence. Yeah, that's exactly right. Actually, this is happening, um, we know, documented in Jefferson County here in Colorado, just right down the street from me, actually. Um, but I'm sure it's happening elsewhere. I would not be surprised. This seems like a tactic used by the teachers unions. What actually happened was the district sent out an email to all parents um, and all staff members saying, reminding teachers that it is illegal um, to ask personal information that is not voluntarily given um, without giving the, the parents an opportunity to opt their student out of that. Uh, so that includes stuff like pronouns and what their gender identity is, sexual orientation, all of that. Well, then uh, come to find out uh, the, the CEA here in Colorado sent an email to their uh, members saying, actually, you should still do this. And the way you should do it is to uh, have the students write it on paper and pencil. Anything that is digitally documented can be requested by FERPA um, under federal law. But if it's under paper and pencil, it's easily thrown out, it's tossed, and there's no evidence that you did it. You know, we're in a scary moment here. You take a state like California where they're adding gender affirmation to the state's child abuse laws. You know, this is all starting in the schools. It, you know, some kid may be feeling awkward and weird or out of place or uncomfortable. And the librarian says, well, maybe it's an issue with your gender. You know, you, you're watching as these schools are socially transitioning the students. And if the parents don't immediately affirm what the school's doing, they may be find themselves investigated by whatever you call your Department of Family and Youth Services or whatever family courts. And in a state like California, you might not be able to leave the state while under investigation. If you say, whoa, whoa, this is, no, my kid does not have gender dysphoria. They're just awkward and, and, and a little detached and going through puberty. I'm, I'm out of here. I'm moving to Texas. You can't leave. You're under investigation by the state. Yeah, that's pretty frightening, isn't it? It's basically showing that the federal government and the state, state of California, has more rights over raising your children than you do. Um, parents everywhere should be pretty terrified of this. We're not a communist country. We're a democratic republic, and that's how um, it should be. But it's not coming across that way when your kids can be taken from you if you don't agree with uh, transitioning your student. And you're, you know your student better than any teacher ever will. I, we keep saying communism, so, but the communists were not like pro I mean, you know, I can't think of any communist revolution or communist party around the world or throughout history that was in favor of this kind of thing. It's kind of this nouveau, you know, new fashionable, you know, wrinkle to being on the left. And I can't understand why. Why is this now the obsession of the teachers union to to involve themselves in what is so obviously a private family matter? Yeah, I mean, this gets pretty meta. It's a pretty deep uh, ideological issue, I think. Um, but James Lindsay, the mathematician, actually wrote a book called The Marxification of Education, where he talks about all of this, how um, Karl Marx's ideas came down into education in the United States in the 1960s, and it rewrit, rewrote all of our education um, curriculum in the United States, all of our public universities, how our teachers are taught how to be teachers, um, all use this ideology. And so I'm actually not surprised that they're attacking identity in this way. Um, they attacked the nuclear family first, and now they're attacking down to the individual most uttermost being, who you are, uh, down to your very DNA is under attack. And it actually, you can trace all of its roots back to Marx, surprisingly. You know, I, when they say, well, this is about abusive households, well, that's for law enforcement and the family courts to deal with, not not the schools, right? And when did when did the math teacher or the librarian or the lunch lady become qualified to be mental health providers? When did this happen? 
Yeah, I think over the last um, few decades, we have slowly ceded raising our children to the government. We've seen them slowly take over um, aspects of raising our children that they they didn't have the responsibility of before. Um, and that started in the 60s and then slowly trickled into sex education and religious education. And now um, they, they do character education and the most formative things that should be happening around the dinner table are happening at school. And so it's not surprising that these people who say that they're the experts, they're the ones that went to school longer than everybody else to uh, raise children, uh, think that they're qualified to, to also be counselors, which is pretty terrifying. You know, I don't know if it's a generational thing, I don't remember wanting to tell my teachers anything, and I sure as heck didn't want to know anything about them, <laughs> right? Like, some of these teachers are like, well, I want to be able to share my life with my students. No, I don't even want to see you in the grocery store. Yeah, yeah. When I was a teacher, it was exactly that. I taught for a couple of years in Colorado, and I didn't want to run into my students after hours, and it was totally inappropriate for me to share my personal life with them. They didn't know anything about me other than I was really passionate about basketball. So uh, that's how it should be. That's how uh, generations of Americans have been raised. But for whatever reason, I think COVID made people go a little nuts and um, teachers suddenly feel that they need to be validated by their fifth grade students. Yeah, that's a little bizarre. Um, if it's your private life, keep it private. You don't share it with your there. These are boundaries that have all been erased and lines that have been crossed. And I, you know, I tell every parent, you not only, I'm a parent, I got three kids, not only be on the lookout, you might have to make an appointment and go to school and walk around and observe and see what your kids are being exposed to.